Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brijesh Mohan, and I head the large enterprise business for its light. A very warm welcome to all of you to the fourth episode of our fireside chat series, Top Drawer Travel Talks. We really appreciate all of you taking time out this afternoon to attend this live session. Today's discussion is on winning travel with data in the post pandemic era. And our host today is Mr. Ashish Kishore who is advisor to Italite and partner at Signature Journeys. Ashish was also previously the MD at Amex GBT and the country head at Danata, an alumnus of the Harvard Business School and with a career spanning more than 25 years, he's a veteran in the travel industry. So without further ado, I welcome our host for today to take over the proceedings. Over to you, Ashish. Thank you, Vijesh, for that lovely introduction. Uh, thank you, friends, for joining us live on the fourth episode of uh, Top Draw Travel Talks. It's been a good journey. Uh, this is probably our last episode for the event, uh, for the year. Uh, but uh, I'm sure we're going to have, uh, you know, more thoughtful conversations in the uh, coming year. As for the topic and the conversation today, uh, we all know that digitalization has made it very easy for organization to ensure uh, data visibility. Uh, and that's largely to uh, support on the employee safety, but also ensure streamlining of internal processes. Real-time data visibility in this post-pandemic world uh, can help us understand the spend incurred in travel and help in reduction uh, in the fraud detection process. However, uh, collating data ensures larger issues ranging from data privacy, data localization, data silos, data diversity, and finally the challenges associated with the operationalization of the insights. Smart managers in organizations uh, are navigating these challenges and making informed choices using augmented analytics. Uh, we all know that in the last two years, every industry has witnessed vast changes in their day-to-day uh, -day functions, supplier interactions, employee interactions, and many more things have changed. Similarly, in travel industry also, uh, there are uh, multitudes of changes, uh, which has now made it inevitable for travel managers and uh, other professionals to uh, you know, focus on these changes. Data visualization, uh, data visualization, we believe, is a key skill that everyone should understand uh, because it's going to help them in reshaping this organization. Uh, with that uh, context in mind, today in our fourth episode, uh, we're going to talk about data visualization, which our guest, uh, Mr. Lalit Singhal. Uh, Lalit is Senior Vice President, Finance and Accounts at Lupin Limited. Healthcare, as we all know, is a sector which has been seeing immense growth in the last two years. But remember, all growth comes with lots of challenges. So nobody else better than uh, Lalit to discuss this topic. Lalit uh, is a CA, CS, CMA by qualification with over 29 years of varied and rich experience, which includes uh, eight and a half years of international uh, work experience working in Spain and Russia. Uh, presently, he's working with Lupin, uh, as I mentioned, at Senior Vice President. And prior to Lupin, he was with Ranbaxi and Pyramids. Uh, a, a fun fact about Lalit, he's an avid runner and makes sure that uh, he runs 30 minutes every day and an hour uh, on weekends, and he participates in marathon. And I think with this background, let me welcome Lalit. Lalit, welcome on the show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Asis, uh, for the nice uh, introduction. And thanks to ET Light for the invitation. And uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon to all the viewers. And uh, before I tell about myself, uh, I would like to share one good news with all of you. Our company, Lumpin Limited, uh, is a very big day for us today. We Today, we got uh, upgradation of our main manufacturing facility, which is in Goa, supplying U.S., uh, uh, upgraded from uh, uh, earlier it was burning letter and now it got uh, uh, voluntary action indicated so uh, we now 
with this, we will be able to get new product approval for, from US. And so we were struggling since 2017. So this is a very a big deal for us, big achievement because US is one of the key market and to supply to US, Goa is our one of the key manufacturing facilities. So I just wanted to share this good news. And about me, so as Asis mentioned, I am CA, CS and CMA by qualification and uh, regarding professional journey. So I started my career from my hometown in Hisar, Haryana. So I joined a small company, worked with the promoter and I worked there in three years and handled everything, including I bring IPO and right issue during that time. And then I got opportunity in Mumbai. So I moved to Mumbai and worked there in corporate finance department of Nicholas Piramal for three years. And then I got an opportunity in Renbexi in Europe. So I moved there. So I was based in Moscow, Russia for and a half year. Thereafter, around four years in Barcelona in Spain. Then in 2008, I came back and joined Asok Piramal Group as CFO for their engineering business. So I was there around one year. Then in 2009, I got this Lupin opportunity. And since 2009, I am working with Lupin. And as Asis mentioned, so I am working in Lupin as Senior Vice President, Finance and Accounts. So this is about my professional journey and personal interest as already mentioned by Asis. So I, I love running. I run daily and also I participate in marathons. So this is brief about me. So over to you, Asis. Excellent. First of all, congratulations for uh, the authorization. I think that's a wonderful Thank news you. for all Thank of you, us. Thank you, Asis. And... Uh, especially with the healthcare industry doing so well in India becoming the health capital of the world. I think it's such a proud moment for all of us as a Indian. So really happy. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm not going to ask you to start with this session, uh, whether you like Spain better or Russia, but <laughs> I will start the conversation uh, with asking a very pertinent question, which is that since you are a senior leader, uh, how does the uh, visibility of data points like, like, like live tracking of employees or real-time update features uh, helps the organizations? Yeah. So, Asis, uh, like uh, this uh, data point for live tracking of employees is an important uh, data point. And uh, yes, uh, even uh, Asis for industries like us, we are in pharmaceutical. So even before uh, COVID pandemic, because we have a large field force, around 8,000 people work in, our, in the field. So we were already having a system in place which uh, uh, provide support to all our field staff because they have to plan in advance about uh, the next month, how many doctors, which areas they will. We were, we, we were already having a tool in place which help, which track, which provide the live uh, system or live support to all our field force. And post pandemic, this thing even become more important for industries or for other functions which was not so keen before COVID pandemic. So it is very important that uh, there, is, there are two things, Asis. One is uh, that uh, we should have or we should not have such a, a tracking system in place. But uh, one thing I want to say that there is no doubt any organization should have the ability to, uh, to have the ability of such tracking, of such visibility whether you use it or not, because it depends on the business operation or depend on the uh, different uh, geographies. But uh, every because now no organization uh, can avoid such important uh, data point in their system. Otherwise, it will be difficult to sustain in the market. So these are very important things. We should have system in place which provide uh, support to our uh, employees as well as to the management to take the corrective and right and appropriate decision for the organization. Mm -hmm. No, your, your last line is absolutely right, uh, that these uh, tools actually assist the leaders to take the right decision. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and taking the conversation forward, uh, do you think the data visibility will become a necessary feature uh, for the smooth functioning of businesses in future? Definitely. Some examples of that would yeah. be... Lovely. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I give you uh, like uh, as I am from finance background, so I can give you examples like uh, uh, 
so this pandemic has uh, taught us uh, how to work in the seamless way without the flow of paper so i tell you like for uh, pandemic we used to get all the vendor invoices in hard copy because of tax and other requirements so we uh, even though we were having a mail room we were doing scanning and then after that it was moving in digital format but still the starting point was getting the hard copy digital copy except wherever there is um, it copy so but because of this covid pandemic because everything was under lockdowns but we have to run the operation because we are in a pharmaceutical sector which is a health sector all the factories were running all the days so immediately we have on war footing basis we have made the changes in our system we have started receiving scan copy of the invoices so even though there was no hard copy so we ensured that another 3 uh, 4 weeks we were around 90% achievement of our timely payment to the vendors so these mm-hmm. things could be possible only because we uh, fine tune our process and started this uh, getting we have created the dedicated email id on those email id we were started getting invoices and then automatically processing and all the further process was already in place so these things helped us to uh, handle the operation to ensure the smooth operation and no disruption so this uh, exercise would have generated lot of data points also because yes. earlier the manual processes don't generate data points well apart from yes. the financial data but just the process yes. data point uh, how yes. did you sort of what learnings you got from that i'm sure our yeah. audience would love to hear from that yeah 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 so one of the learning uh, as is like uh, uh, i give you example of uh, tnd so in case of tnd earlier we used to uh, get all the hard copies for all the vouchers then after this we started thinking whether we need to get all the hard copies from all the employees so we have discussed with the tax requirement whether it is direct tax indirect tax and other requirement so we come to a conclusion that there are many type of uh, expense reimbursement in tnd where there is no need to ask for hard copies so we are in the place of implementing those things so that will be a permanent uh, feature so going forward also even employee has to submit only in the uh, concur software and no need to send the hard copies which were the practice we were following so far so this is one of the learning Uh, which we got from uh, this pandemic mm, nice so this is also uh, helping you once you get the visibility that what is the need yes. for uh, these data points you change yes. your process yes. which will now yes. result in actually better employee interface and do you think that's going to improve the employee morale and the entire uh, ethos of the company because people will get their reimbursement faster they'll be happier Yes, sure, sure, definitely. Yes, is because they also no need to uh, for them to submit in system and then sending hard copy. So they will also get relief, and definitely, as you rightly mentioned, the processing will be fast. Hmm. So this is a classic case of an organization uh, which looks into its data point, visualizes it, and then take corrective actions. I'm sure it's not going to be easy. It won't have been easy also uh, because right. everyone is used to a certain way of managing it. Mm. so that's that's a good learning for all of us uh, what yes. other aspects of data visibility uh, you know which are you know our listeners our audience uh, and managers in this audience can sort of use in their day to day life to make sure that they excel in their travel jobs yeah so like uh, one of the example as is like in case of uh, again uh, quoting the tnd so in case of tnd so there are many employees who are taking advance so we have we 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 uh, collect the data how many employees up to which grade uh, how frequently uh, taking the advances so then this on on the basis of this data we we could decide uh, up to which grade we can issue the corporate credit card so that we can avoid the giving advances to the employees and they can use the corporate credit card so this is one of the data point which helped us to decide uh, up to grade we can uh, uh, allocate the corporate credit card and there is no need to give advances to the employees so because we save on working capital and also the uh, handling is easy hmm. interesting so you went one step ahead after understanding and looking at the data point of yes. travel and expense yes. and introduced right. a new modern element into it by issuing a corporate card 
Yes. If somebody would have asked you pre-pandemic, you would have thought about the misuse of card, the paperwork required, the liability on the company. But post-pandemic, um, and with this data point, uh, you would have full visibility of this process. Correct. Right. So you exactly know whom to deliver this. Okay, right. perfect. So this is on the T and E side. Uh, any other area where you sort of uh, looked into, looked uh, with more, uh, you know, focused, uh, in a more focused element uh, about data? Yeah, so uh, as I am from finance background, so like uh, in case of pay payment processing also to the vendors, so there are, uh, we have implemented many tools with the data points which helped us for faster reconciliation, whether it is uh, the travel uh, vendor or whether we, it is the other vendor. So mm. there are multiple transactions, there are multiple invoice accounting, multiple type of payments. So there is always a reconcil reconciliation piece is there. And also there is GST involved is there because we have to get GST credit. So there, there were uh, multiple transactions. So in this, uh, also the data helped us to reconcile because there are, uh, we have around 20,000 employees. So a lot of people travel, okay. In pandemic, the travel got stopped, but again started. And now as far as domestic is concerned, it is more or less the, it come to the pre-COVID level. So because of the lot of uh, travel, lot of transactions. So there was a lot of, uh, uh, flight booking or transactions with the hotel to our admin. And then it becomes a nightmare how to reconcile balances between our and the vendor and as well as to take the GST credit matching with the GST portal, what the other vendor has uploaded there. So all these mm -hmm. things were creating a nightmare and definitely with the, the good uh, data points. And also we have implemented Conquer uh, one, one and a half year ago. Earlier we were using Conquer in US and Europe, but then we went to the global contract and now we are using Conquer for the global TND. So uh, this helped us to uh, take this data and then uh, do faster reconciliation to ensure seamless payment and also no leakage of GST. Excellent. So by visualizing the data, you could optimize your travel spend and you could make sure that the GST was properly captured. What about the overall uh, aspect of uh, TNE in terms of uh, how much you wanted to, in terms of planning and optimization part of it. Do you want to shed some yeah. light on so, that? Yes, yes. So, as is like, uh, 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 there are a lot of uh, things, uh, there are a lot of data which we are working, like one of the items I can tell you, like we have a uh, rate contract for hotels, so we get good discount, but there are still, there are uh, not uh, main cities or tier two, tier three. So, those data we have to get, we have to analyze and then we can do a better negotiation and get a good discount. So for all these things, you need uh, data and then okay. you can uh, make appropriate decisions. So we are still in that journey. So uh, mm -hmm. these things will help. And now after Conquer, there are a lot of uh, analytics can be done. Correct. Correct. And these analytics will actually tell you about your travel behavior, your purchase behavior. Right. Um, your key cities and you can triangulate all this data point and, and, and sort of optimize your plan perfectly. Correct. Mm, very nice. Now, apart from this, I also wanted to understand that the organizations have been leveraging this big data uh, to achieve their sustainability goal. I know sustainability is not your direct responsibility in the organization. We spoke about it. Uh, but today, travel uh, does generate a lot of carbon footprint. And uh, and that's where it becomes a senior leadership's responsibility. Right? So look into ASG goals also when you're doing vendor management. Uh, how do you, how you're focusing to use the data lakes and the data points to uh, manage the uh, sustainability goals of Lupin. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, as is, you rightly mentioned. So in our case, also there is there is a lot of data in our ecosystem. Okay. So uh, we are working on uh, creating a data lake because it is very important to know the usable data and then to see how to effectively use that. And uh, there are lot of lot of data so we are working uh, with uh, with the help of experts to create a data lake and to identify the usable data and then to effectively use it and uh, looking 
is in the journey of uh, transformation of culture from a knowing culture to data driven learning culture because culture play import, important role and in the new era post this covid pandemic and data is everything so the we will be data driven and uh, whoever has good command and good uh, analysis on the data they can uh, take advantage of that so we are working uh, on that on the culture part also and as well as the creating the data lake so that uh, we know uh, what are the data is usable and then effectively use that because there are a lot of uh, uh, strategic decision which need which requires such data and uh, right now whatever we have we are using that but uh, there are a lot of more things are required because the dynamics are changing now the business is no more as it used to be so Correct. whatever best analysis we can do whatever best data we can get because now uh, there are a lot of pressure like as i mentioned we are in pharmaceutical sector so in us us is our one of the key market so there are pricing pressure and other pressure so where you can play you have to see how to optimize the production how to uh, optimize the cost how to reduce that how to be more effective so these things are in our control so we continuously work on those uh, with the help of uh, whether it is mckenzie or whether it is bcg so all these big consultant help us and we uh, uh, work on many projects we make internal teams how to derive the best uh, optimization in cost whether it is in the factory how to get the maximum output to have the uh, uh, least idle cost or whether to optimize in the expenses and also uh, assist this uh, uh, with the help of this uh, covid there are a lot of learning like uh, even though we will move uh, uh, prior to covid level of travel but uh, there will be a lot of uh, continuously saving because the mindset had changed earlier like in mumbai we have two offices one in navi Uh, um, uh, towns so whenever there were meetings so we have to go there now everybody is aligned to so meetings are happening on teams even if it is normal working of our office so we don't uh, travel for meetings uh, from one office to another so this uh, covid helped us a lot to bring such uh, um, uh, thinking in the mind of everybody so now these things are normal earlier like work from home it was a concept people thinking whether it is workable or not workable but now it is common thing and we are also working on a pilot to see whether and how many people we can make permanent work from home so these things now is the new era and new normal excellent so i'll i'll sort of uh... summarize this for our audience you've really given us lots of uh, important point and before i reach out to you for take away uh, uh, what is right is uh, what what do we know so far we know so far is that the business trends are changing both from the consumption point of view as well as the uh, production employee point of view your supply chains are 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 changing and with more technology at each line supply chain manufacturing selling uh employee behavior everything is tracked and once you put all this data in single resource that is called a data lake if for our audience who don't understand uh data lake is it is a concept where you start with first capturing all the data that you have and then as lalit ji rightly mentioned that from that data once you've secured that data you have made sure it is uh, sort of uh, very uh, authentic it is cleansed it is uh, sort of protected from external attacks so a lot of work goes in that once you got that data then you put the layer of uh, uh, data visualization and uh, bi tools to actually split and and look at what data is usable and what data is not and then you put your algorithms on top of it now the usable data throws very interesting trends which then are used for strategic decision making a simple case in point is uh when lupin as just lalit ji mentioned started automating their travel and expense process they could figure out uh the optimization that's one piece of it but they could also change their user behavior and the process by distributing credit card i'm going to that point again uh in this conversation because that's a key action item now suddenly if he wouldn't have automated the process he wouldn't have realized at what level he needs to issue the card and how do you optimize the process so i think that's that's a fantastic uh, thought process that we have uh, thank you lalit ji 
uh, I would want you to share your key takeaways with our participants before we sure. uh, get into question and answer sessions. Yeah, sure, Asis. Okay. Please go ahead. So these are the yes, yes, Asis. So these are the key takeaways. So as uh, you briefly already mentioned, so visibility of data point like uh, tracking of employee is important for the smooth of functioning of any organization. So as I mentioned in pharmaceutical for field force, we were already using it, but nowadays it is important for any organization, any uh, department. And I am of the view that uh, uh, whether you use it or not, but we should be, we should have the ability to uh, have this in place. Then uh, data lakes creation is very, very important because there are plenty of data and uh, how to collect the data in one place and then to know how much is usable and from that, effective use. It is very, very important going forward for sustainability of any organization. And then data visualization can help travel manager to excel as they're analyzing. Yes. As I mentioned, like uh, giving advances, then moving to corporate credit card and also hotel discounting and also like uh, uh, visual credit card. So uh, uh, there are many payments earlier uh, were happening uh, to the hotel, etc. But we start using a visual credit card. So we save on 30 days because visual credit card, the payment due date will be after 30 days and the hotel get yeah. immediate payment. So these are yeah. the things which help the travel managers. So these are the key takeaways. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. Virtual credit cards are really very important for yes. uh, corporate business uh, because as you get, you're right, the supplier gets the money up front and this industry right. today is hit by cash flow. So everybody does right. look for quicker cash flow. You get cheaper rate, and on the flip side, uh, you know, organization gets a thirty to forty-five day credit. Yeah, so that's that's right. very nice. Uh, let's see what questions we have for ourselves. Yes, Ashish. So um, there's one pertinent question. I think although we have touched upon it, uh, it has come up in the uh, in the chat window. And this is more to do with, uh, again, you know, we did speak about data visualization and tracking, but the question was more to do like, uh, you know, if probably Laliji could point out that at Lupin, um, you know, how has data visualization and tracking actually helped in um, achieving cost optimization when it comes to travel? Uh, because travel, you know, at least pre-pandemic, it it was the second biggest cost in any organization, right? So when you deploy all the new age, um, you know, systems and technologies, how can you actually achieve uh, cost optimization for travel? So any anything from your experience that you would like to share with the audience? Yeah, 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 sure, sure, Vijay, thank you. Yeah, so as I gave example of uh, the uh, rate contract with hotels, so these uh, data points help to see which are the cities, how much volume we uh, use. And accordingly, we can do negotiation or we did negotiation and agree on the rate discount at a central level. So with this, uh, uh, it help us to reduce uh, the overall uh, hotel accommodation cost, uh, which happened in case of big cities. And as I, 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 as I mentioned, there are also uh, uh, smaller cities, tier two, tier three. So there are a lot of data. So we are working on that and definitely uh, we will have more benefits once we uh, analyze and work on that. Sure, thanks. Thanks, Lalji. Thank you. Um, I think this question is more uh, for um, Ashish, um, you know, and maybe Lalji can add to it. Uh, are Indian companies serious about their sustainability goals uh, when compared to US and Europe? And does travel play a major part in this? Oh, so, so I must say, uh, you know, based on my experience today, the need and realization of sustainable or uh, sustaining our planet is greater than ever. It was a topic of hot conversation, but I think now it has become a topic of, uh, you know, uh, realization. Uh, pandemic has told us that none of us is greater than uh, the nature. So if we need to make sure that our generations remain safe and secure and live in this planet happily, then those steps have to be taken today. So it's across the uh, countries and continents, because I think it, this is more of a human being realization that this is, that at the mass level, we are now realizing that 
we were doing something wrong, all of us, in our own small little way. And travel, as we know, generates a lot of carbon footprint. So this becomes and not only carbon footprint of the flight, but also when you're traveling, you're eating out, uh, you're staying in hotels, the linens are washed. So there are a lot of activities that we can do to make sure that our carbon footprints are minimized. Of course, we can't reduce it. And that's where corrective actions will start taking shape. Uh, so I believe uh, India as being one of the leading countries in the world and uh, you would have seen our national commitment in the uh, recent UN conference as well. I think uh, sustainability goals are in top of the every CEO's agenda. Profitability, of course, but I think beyond shareholder and profitability, the third most and the employee safety, the third most agenda is now sustainability. A lot of organizations have pledged themselves for operating in this space. So. Any young, you know, participants here, next five to 10 years, whatever you do, all your actions should be with the lens of sustainability, not only profitability. Safety, sustainability are two key mantras and you will get management sign off for everything. If you say this process is more safe and will bring safety to our employees. Secondly, this process is going to help our uh, uh, planet, you will get a lot of takers within the organization. You talk about only profit. Mm. Profit is a byproduct of a good, healthy organization. Laleji, your views? Yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree with you, Asis. And nowadays the boundaries are not there, so you cannot be uh, you cannot be in silo. So you have to be uh, top as per the world where. It is moving. And also one more thing, like uh, now everybody start uh, accepting that uh, sustainability bring addition to the um, stakeholder or the company value because uh, it has a direct link. So this becomes important now. And also one of the learning from the COVID is before COVID, the people were more thinking about me. But uh, after this COVID, it's it changed changed a lot. So people start thinking about the planet, about us, about we. So this is also a very good uh, learning from this pandemic. And definitely now, uh, slowly, slowly, it's already increasing. And slowly, slowly, it will have more focus even small industries will give focus on sustainability because it it has direct link with the future growth and shareholder value. One thing which I will not put you on spot, but just for everybody in our uh, webinar to realize that it's only a matter of time when our accounting book starts looking at uh, ESG or the environmental safety and the uh, governance tasks. They start capturing their value in balance sheet. Just that the people capital has not been captured yet. Like a company yeah. shareholder value does not take an account, perceived account, yes, but not in data points, the talent which is available and the quality of talent. In the same way, sustainability will very soon start getting captured. Somebody is going to come up with a formula which is accepted to the world. And Laliji, very soon our balance sheets would have these two, three elements as well. The so quality well, of so talent, well. human capital, and obviously planet capital at some time. Very good. Thanks, thanks, Ashish, and thanks, Laliji. Um, there's another question in the chat window. I'm tempted to take it myself, <laughs> which, sure, sure. which uh, you know, asked like, you know, how do you kind of manage or validate, uh, you know, false claims when it comes to, um, you know, expense reimbursement, expense management. So there, there would be fake or fabricated bills and duplicate claims. Uh, so that's an area which Italite is very strong with, right? And uh, I know uh, whoever has asked this question, I'm going to ask our teams to reach out and uh, help you with answers pertaining to that. Um, yeah. Uh, so do you want to talk about what what technology you deploy? I, I know, I know it's very interesting. I want you to explain to our uh, viewers as well. Uh, so I'm, I'm presuming it's to me, right, Ashish? You want yes, to yes, please. Yeah, okay. Please. Yeah, so very quickly, in the interest of time, um, um, you know, we are one of those unique, um, you know, expense management platforms out there, and our system is actually capable of 
calling out or raising a, a red flag when it comes to any kind of fraudulent transactions or duplicate bills. Um, it it even goes a level deeper. So as per your travel policy, if you have certain items that should not be reimbursed, like be it alcohol or tobacco or whatever, those things, if mentioned, it can it can actually flag off, right? Uh, if there is an expense uh, uh, which has come in with a date, uh, then the system is intelligent enough to check whether it's a weekend, right? Because uh, then there is a red flag again. Why is why is there an expense on a weekend, right? So it's always uh, the you know the finance teams and the uh, concerned teams are alerted on such uh, you know uh, submissions. But these are probably some are genuine. There could be some travel which have ha which has happened over a weekend due to business reasons, but it always raises a flag, right? So it can, and I can go on and on, but these are some of the unique features that we have. Uh, and our team, uh, you know, whoever on this call would like to know more about it, lights expense management, we definitely, you know, would come and give you more details and information around. Anything you would like to add, Ashish? Uh, no, absolutely. I think uh, your expense product is, uh, is really gonna give a lot of people run for their money. Uh, it's just they need to test it and uh, experience it. Uh, so good answer. I would also take up a question by Rahul Malik. He's asking, can data visualization influence or promote digital transformation? Uh, so Rahul, you're absolutely right. What is digital transformation? Uh, we've got a couple of minutes, so let me sort of uh, put some. Digital transformation is moving away from a mindset or a certain business standard and start leveraging digital acquisition of customers and digital service delivery to customer and everything in between see any manufacturing or service industry produces something or delivers some service to customer right so you will not be able to complete your digitalization journey until you understand what are the data points and that's the beauty of uh, deploying softwares, uh, working more on digital platforms, uh, using digital acquisitions uh, processes. Whereas Laliji said from the knowing mindset, hume malum hai, de, aise hi hota hai, to looking at hardcore data and say, no, my target audience earlier uh, is, is exactly an age group between say 18 to 25. The, my marketing can be sharper. My finance payable can be sharper. My every element of running a large or a small company can become sharper if we start looking at data points. Then instead of assumptions, as, as all of us have been trained to become intuitive managers, from being intuitive managers, we will become scientific managers. And science is nothing but uh, challenging uh, what the reality is. And how would you do that? only when you have a sound data with you. So can you see the linkage between uh, Rahul from data visualization? Uh, unless you see the data, you will not be able to transform your company. So both are linked. More digital transformation will generate more data. So it's a cyclic method. It is a constant evolution and process. And that's why setting up a, you know, the process of a proper data lake and then working, putting proper tools around this is the right way to go about it, which I think Lupin and Nalaji have rightly done. I hope I've answered your question, Rahul. Ashish, uh, will you have time for one more question? Small one. And, and this is uh, for you. Um, so while we talk about data visibility, uh, according to you, does it also incorporate a conversation around the level of transparency within an organization? So, as I mentioned in my initial conversation, as so while data visualization is great for organizations, with big data comes greater responsibility. Uh, it's an Avengers statement, <laughs> I'm just changing it. But uh, organization now have too much of information about too many things, about their suppliers, vendors, employees, and uh, there are a lot of challenges. These data cannot hand, you know, land in hands of uh, it cannot land in wrong hands. It needs to be protected correctly. Um, and that's why, and, and to correlate this data, you also have to have data diversity. Now there's a lot of conversation about uh, partial AI. Uh, partial AI is not, but something 
the uh, you know biases of uh, or sorry bias AIs uh, is bias of a code writer because of which the data that you're seeing or the end result that you're seeing already has a bias. Uh, so those sort of things you have to be really careful about. These are new extremely sharp streams which are coming out as a challenges when more and more organizations are getting billions and terabytes of data with them. So important topics, you are absolutely right. There's a lot of challenges when you get more information. Uh, so organizations will have to put up the right uh, architect, right security measures, as well as right talent, which can manage this sort of data and around it. So a lot of work needs to be done around or around this topic, Prajesh. Sure, Ashish, thanks. Thanks for that answer. Um, I think we can, yeah, I think that summarizes our questions. For Excellent. Okay. So thank you, Vijesh. Thank you, Laleji, for a lovely conversation. Uh, I know we keep this session brief, but we can talk on this topic for uh, much longer, I'm sure. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, my request to everyone, please uh, submit the feedback. You will get a feedback link. It helps us become better and uh, it, it helps me make my sessions more interactive. So please give us good feedbacks or bad feedbacks, whatever you have. Uh, but please do give feedback. It's very important for us. And thank you very much for your time. Uh, and uh, yeah, lovely to see you in 2022. I hope this whole COVID is, has gone by then. 2022 becomes more interactive. Uh, we can meet up in person at some time and hold this top draw travel talk. That's what I look forward in 22. And uh, yeah, have a nice year. Enjoy your, uh, everyone enjoy your vacations and see you on the other side on 2022. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye, Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, sis. Thank you, everybody. Bye.